Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a Boros Blade deck, which is a Boros Winota deck, featuring a few new cards from Strixhaven, like Blade Historian, the 4 mana 2 3 human cleric, giving attacking creatures we control double strike, so it's the perfect human to find with Winota's trigger. Winota's a 4 mana 4 4 human warrior, saying whenever a non human creature we control attacks, look at the top 6 cards of our library, and we may put a human creature card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. And it gains indestructible until end of turn, so we can potentially find Blade Historian with Winota's trigger, giving all our attacking creatures double strike, which makes it much harder to block and potentially threatens lethal on the spot. Then we also get to play with 4 copies of Elite Spellbinder from Strixhaven, 3 mana for a 3-1 human cleric, so another human we can hit with Winota, it has flying, and when a Spellbinder enters a battlefield, look at target opponent's hand, and you may exile a non-land card from it, and for as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may play it at an increased cost of 2 generic mana. Even if the Spellbinder dies, that card will still be taxed, so we get access to a ton of information with the Spellbinder looking at the opponent's hand, and we also get a nice evasive threat. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we've got some of the usual suspects with the full playset of Selfless Savior as a non-human to trigger Winota, that can be sacrificed to give one of our creatures indestructible until end of turn, so it can protect our key creatures like Winota and Blade Historian. We've got Usher of the Fallen as another 1 mana non-human, can also boast to make 1-1 one -one tokens. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Luminarch Aspirant as another human to find with Winota, just a powerful card individually that will help out any aggressive creature deck, putting plus 1 plus 1 counters on a creature at the beginning of each combat. And then a Rimrock Knight, a non-human to trigger Winota, it's a 3-1 so attacks pretty nicely, especially once it gains double strength with Blade Historian, and that's also what makes the Boulder Rush adventure so powerful if we can combine it with double strike represents a ton of extra damage and then at 3 mana we've got more interaction with Bonecrusher Giant, which can use the Stomp Adventure first, dealing 2 damage to any target, and then a non-human for Winota. Same goes with Skyclave Apparition, a non-human creature, that when it enters a battlefield can exile up to 1 target to non-land, non-token permanent we don't control, with mana value 4 or less, and when the Apparition leaves the battlefield, the exiled card's owner creates an XX Blue Illusion Creature token, where X is the mana value of the exiled card, so this gives us access to removal, and a creature to enable we nota. And then the mana base includes 4 of the red white pathway, 4 of the new snarls, then 6 mountains and 10 basic planes to make the snarl come into play untapped. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, our hand is pretty land light, but being on the draw I think makes this keepable. Facing hull monitors, so red aggro. Which is typically one of the tougher matchups for the Winota deck. But we do have a bit of interaction with Bone Crusher, so we'll see how things work out. So we take one. And we're ready to stomp the opponent's two drop. Gonna hang on to Savior as a way to trigger Winota. Opponent's got a Frostbite, and another Hull Monitor. Just gonna pass, in case they have a hasty Robber of the Rich we can stomp. If not, we'll just kill a Monitor. And there's a Robber. Would have loved the land, but we'll just have to pass with another stomp. It's gonna be a Torbrain. So, gotta stomp Hull Monitor here and then hope to pick up a white source for Skyclave Apparition. And then we've got double bone crusher as follow-ups. They can use the monitor to prevent apparition from blocking. Or play a frostbite and get a 4-4 token. So 
So we could play Winota, but it's not going to be great by itself. So I think we do go for Bone Crusher here. They can use Hall Monitor to prevent it from blocking. Otherwise, I would be happy to trade for the token. And then we got to hope to dodge an Ember Cleave. So we're at five. So it's really not that interesting of a decision. Just gonna play another Bone Crusher and pass. And then try to trade for the token. Facial Saving can turn into a creature next turn. Could also block the Fervent Champion, go to one. Uh, is that helpful? Let's say I go to one, next turn play Winota, attack. They can still block with Faceless Haven. So even if we get lucky and hit like a Blade Historian, we're a bit short of lethal. So I think I should just trade for the 4 4 then. And then at least something like a Spellbinder can trade for Faceless Haven. So we can go Spellbinder plus Rimrock Knights. Have to stay back. And then hopefully next turn we can land Winota. So they're probably going to prevent Spellbinder from blocking instead of the Giants. Alright, I would rather trade Spellbinder. Since that one also doesn't trigger Winota. And then definitely allow to play Winota and attack with the Rimrock Knights. Question is if the Giant can also attack. I think we can since we'll have Usher as another blocker. And we hit Blade Historian and Aspirant. And that's game, Exaxis. So we just needed one attack step here to defeat Monored. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and we are land light, but we just need a third land for this hand to function. Yeah, we'll try it. Savior into turn two stomp. And then double spellbinder for disruption and pressure. Question is whether we stomp face if they don't play anything. Uh, if that makes it easier. And then we'll have a look with the Spellbinder here. Even though Giant would set up Winota a little bit better, we're not guaranteed our fourth land. So... I'm gonna get rid of one of the Bonecrusher Giants. Although they have a backup. Any argument for Mammoth? I still think we go for the Bonecrusher. And as you can see, it taxes both halves of the card. So we don't have double white, so we can go Aspirant plus Usher. So I think we just play another Spellbinder and then grab the second Bone Crusher. Lobstroke Beasts also potentially a problem. Although Bone Crusher is kind of the cleaner answer for Spellbinder, and right now our plan is to just attack in the air. So this is not going to be the best setup for Winota. Opponent saves their Evolving Wild so they can adventure and play Lostrug Beast here, presumably. Or they might go for Stomp. In which case we'll use a Selfless Savior. Uh, 
Alright, so the beast adventured and played. There's line four. So now we want to set up our non-humans for Winota with Bone Crusher plus Usher. We know there's no Amber Cleave waiting in the wings. So as long as we don't take lethal, we're pretty likely to attack back for the win. Opponent does swing with both, so if they fetch, pump this for two, that's 12 plus two is still one shy of lethal. And they also don't have double rent for Embercleaf should they have top decked it, so I think we can safely take it. So we're at three. And we don't need many hits off Winota to win here. Opponent gonna stomp Usher. Do I want to protect it? Uh, probably no point in doing so. Play Winota. Attack, we get two triggers. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. Blade Historian is gonna close out the game on the spot. And another Winota for good measure. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. We might not have Winota, but we get to curve out nicely. Probably gonna lead with Usher. Speaker of the Heavens, so probably Mono White Tech, and there's Winota. And joins us right on time. So against the life gain deck. Yeah, don't expect to need Savior right away, so we'll play Usher. That way if they play turn to Aspirant, we can still trade for a 2-2 lifelink. It's gonna be a Daxos instead. And then I'll just take one. Alright, Pona stays back. And then, even though we could stomp, probably better off going Aspirant here. And then... Put Counter on Usher. Probably should have just played the planes here to not give away that we're Boros yet. Apparition gets rid of Usher. So that gets rid of our only non-human at the moment. Although we can stomp Skyclave Apparition, which will give us an extra non-human token. So that all works out nicely. And then we have to decide between Usher and Savior. I think we'll go with Usher. Alright, so fourth land gives us access to potentially two Winota triggers. Second speaker, opponent up to 24. Third speaker, 25, so they're getting close to the 27 necessary to make angels. But there's fourth land, which could mean Winota, or we could take a different approach and go Spellbinder Savior first, but problem there is that we give the opponent a pretty good chance of untapping and making a couple angels. So I think land Winota is probably our best course of action. And then where do we put the plus one counter? Could put it on Aspirant itself. Although the Aspirant doesn't trigger Winota so we don't have to attack with it. 
So I could put it on the Usher. That way if we hit Blade Historian, it can at least trade for Daxos. Yeah, I don't have to tank with Aspirant, and then I think I do pump Usher and send these two. And hits an extra Winota, although that does mean losing the 4-4 that's currently on defense, but it's probably still worth it. And Aspirant. So they do get to eat my Usher of the Fallen, but we should get them low enough where we can prevent them from making any angels. Unless they decide to maybe block Winota, take 5, but then they're not getting enough to get up to 27, unless they can gain more life with the cards they have in hand. So points up to 25. So another Radiant Fountain, I guess, would do it. Mall of the Skyclaves. Alright, that's pretty great too. So now they have a 3 power first striking, life linker, and they get to make two angels. Alright, so this game got a lot more complicated now. All we can do is turn our creature sideways and hope for the best. And uh, might as well play Savior pre combots. And then one counter definitely goes on Usher, the other. I could put on Aspirant itself. We're pretty likely to hit a Blade Historian. So I think we put counter here, counter here. Sack with all. Spellbinder. And there's a Blade Historian at long last. Her opponent survives, but now we prevent them from making any future angels, so yeah, pretty big swings there with Winota, our opponent almost managing to take over with Speaker. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Couple of one drops, we can interact with Stomp, and then Spellbinder will give us good information to make sure the path is clear for Winota. Opponent with a Temple of Malady. And now with the Zagoth Trium, Adventures of Lost Rock Beast. So seems like a good window for Luminarch Aspirants. Now the 5 5 Beast will be an annoying blocker. Apparition can eventually exile it. So for now, probably gonna end up stomping the 1-1 one, one token. Serrated Scorpion's fine. And a Fiend Artisan. Alright, I guess we'll Storm the Fiend Artisan instead. But we can wait for the opponent to attack. Still no third land, but we can Storm the 1-1 one, one token now. So put counter on Aspirant itself, attack with both, and we can punish a double block. Another Scorpion, opponent passes. So could go for Apparition here, which sets up another non-human for Winota, or we can Spellbinder to have a look to know what's incoming. I think I still like Apparition. I 
and then put another counter on the Usher. Diversifying a little bit. So we are down to 10. And our opponent found their fourth lane, so we'll see what happens. And binding, gonna get rid of the Aspirant, so we still have our two non-humans for Winota. And let's see if we can end the game by hitting a Blade Historian. Well, we don't even get to find out. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand feels a bit too slow, too many 4-drops, not enough ways to enable Winota. This is much better. So we can go turn 1 Usher, turn 2 Rimrock Knight. So this hand would have been perfect if we could keep 7. As is, what do we get rid of? We do have more 3-drops we could draw into. We're facing an Obosh deck, so this could be Teamer Adventures with Obosh, which do play quite a bit of interaction. So I could also see the argument for keeping the Spellbinder to disrupt the opponent. Or we can just keep a hand that hopes to draw another 3-drop to replace Spellbinder and then just try to curve out into Winota. And we do see the turn 1 Lovestruck Beast. Picked up second Winota, so... Not the ideal draw. We'll take one. Could have also made the argument of getting rid of the Rimrock Knight since we can potentially boost the Usher on turn two, but it doesn't make a non-human token, so wouldn't be able to set up Winota as nicely. Did pick up Apparition in the meantime, so at least we have a three drop to get rid of the beast. And I'll happily take one, because that means we get to hit for three. Opponent recognizes that and stays back. So no attack, and then hope to hit some nice humans off Winota next turn. It's going to be Innkeeper. And a card foretold, maybe an Elrond's Epiphany. Could set up an extra Rimrock Knight, but I'm just going to play Winota here. And Blade Historian is what we're hoping for. Alright, opponent concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Missing double white for Apparition, but there we go. Opponent on Teamer with an Innkeeper, which probably isn't allowed to survive here. And then we might curve Bone Crusher into Blade Historian. Opponent foretells a card. Yeah, I think I like playing Bone Crusher as a creature that hits a little bit harder if our plan is to get double strike next turn. So this might be an Alrun's Epiphany. Eh, maybe not, maybe it's the counter spell instead. In which case I can wait on Blade Historian and go with Savior plus Aspirant first. So let's play Aspirant. See if this prompts a response. And they're gonna Prismari command, so we're forced to sank the other savior. Could have definitely considered 
playing savior before aspirants for this exact scenario. So we could have hit for one more. Or if they had like a bone crusher giant instead. Where do we put the plus one counter? I think just a bone crusher. So next turn they could already Alvron's Epiphany thanks to the treasure. That's going to be a gold span first. That one we sadly cannot get rid of with Apparition. So next turn they're going to get to Alvron's Epiphany with a gold span in play, which is a lot more impactful. But we do get to hit back pretty hard as well. And we've got a savior for protection. Ooh, a disdainful stroke. Look at that. Yeah, that's uh, quite a blowout here. So next turn, it can still go with the Epiphany. Probably want to start diversifying a bit more. Yeah, otherwise we would have had lethal here. So our opponent gets to hit us, Epiphany. Yeah, we're going to be pretty low. So if they have another Epiphany, we're dead. Assuming they had an untapped land, which I guess they don't. So just a gold span attacking. But now those birds are gonna soak up our next couple attacks. So it's not looking good. We can play double apparition. Although it doesn't get rid of tokens, so we're just getting rid of the beast. And then best I can do is probably put the counter on Savior and attack with all. and plays around another Bone Crusher, dealing two damage. But yeah, we're dead to another Epiphany. Not sure what else they could have in hand here at this point. So pretty key Disdainful Stroke made the difference, Innkeeper. All right, maybe they don't have uh, Epiphany. Well, we're just gonna turn our creature sideways. Counter on Apparition, perhaps. Is this a Brazen Borrower to bounce something? If they can deal with the Apparition, they get an extra blocker. So that way they would survive. Uh huh, it's a Magma Opus. So our opponent's gonna take two from the Bone Crusher. And then, what are they targeting here? So, I'm assuming red arrows are tap and blue arrows are deal damage. So we're gonna be left with just a selfless savior, even if we sacrifice it to make, let's say, the apparition indestructible. That still leaves us pretty dead on board, so. Opponent also gets a 4-4 elemental. I guess uh, I may have misinterpreted the arrows here, but either way we're dead. GG's on to the next one.
All right, we're on the play. This hand could work out if we pick up a couple lands, including a red source. So how likely is that to happen? And how good is this hand if we don't or if we have to wait an extra turn? Well, we do have an Usher, which can at least boast in the meantime, but still probably a mulligan overall. This is slightly better. We can curve Rimrock Knight into Apparition into a Blade Historian. And a Winota. Alright. So ideally they play something we can exile and then we pick up land 4. So far so good. The bad news is we drew double blade historian so we're less likely to find one with a Winota. Although we are allowed to play Blade Historian first, which I think is going to be the play here. Opponent's probably going to chump and sacrifice the goats after blocking Rimrock Knight and take four. And now Blade Historian is going to be a big target for the opponent to take out. And opponent does jump with the Strider. Maybe there's a board wipe incoming. Aha, uh -huh. claim the firstborn apparition. And there was Strider to sacrifice it. Fair enough. So now we only get one Winota trigger, but we have guaranteed double strike. So it still seems decent. And hit another Winota, which gets to attack right away. So your opponent on a Black Rat Sacrifice deck can be a tough matchup for creature decks like this. And then by taking out Strider first, we don't lose the Blade Historian here, so not actually a great double block. Our opponent's stomps are Rimrock Knight, so no more Winota triggers. And we get to attack. Still 6 power with double strike. Alright, we're all in here. At the very least, they can escape a Wolf Strider. It's going to be a Croxa making this discard. Five lands still lets us do everything we want, including using Stomp and playing the Bonecrusher Giant. So they might have overvalued making us discard. And uh, Spellbinder not going to do much when you put us empty-handed, but still a nice flying threat. Alright, so opponents got one card in hand, a few cards they can escape, although missing double red for Croxa. So if they escape Voice Strider, they get two creatures to block with, which is still not enough to survive. And our opponent concedes. So yeah, took a mulligan, but we nota made this hand a lot more powerful than it would have been otherwise.
So yeah, overall, at the end of the day, we know it's still a very powerful card in Standard, and especially with the addition of Blade Historian, this deck has picked up a nice new tool. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.